Hello and welcome to Rio Talk. I'm Gleito Martins. And I'm Marco Cerritos. Hey Marco, second episode. I'm very excited. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you to everyone watching our first episode and coming back to our second episode. We have lots to talk about. Yeah, I know you have good uh, uh, picks. Yeah, theatrical. We yeah. have some good theatrical picks, some good streaming picks. And we also have some local coverage with one of our big film festivals in town. So we definitely have a lot to talk about. And you, the pick of the week for a movie theater is The Northman? Yes, that's right. The Northman comes out this Friday. And uh, the best way to describe it would be a Viking, uh, a, a revenge tale set within Vikings and Hamlet all rolled into one. Uh, it's directed by Robert Eggers, who previously did The Witch and The Lighthouse. Very moody and amazingly tense films. Uh, if you've seen those films, if you've seen them and liked them, you know exactly what you're getting into with his style, with his uh, embrace of the camera and sound especially. Uh, as I mentioned a second ago, The Northman is essentially a Viking take on Hamlet. And it stars Alex Gunnar Skarsgård, who has played Tarzan before, but in this take is uh, essentially playing a very athletic Viking. your vengeance. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. Essentially, the film has an all-star cast. Aside from Skarsgård, we have Anya Taylor-Joy, who previously worked with Eggers on The Witch. Uh, Ethan Hawke, uh, who also plays a very strong but uh, pivotal supporting role. And Nicole Kidman is in this as well. So, very, very stacked cast on top of what is already a very strong film. Uh, this is third feature, and as strong as the film is, it is not as scary as The Witch or The Lighthouse, but what it lacks for in scares, it makes for it makes up for in blood. It is extremely violent, extremely gory, but please don't let that put you off. Wow. And also, Nicole Kidman seems to be doing a lot of movies lately. Yeah, she's been working a lot, and she's been working a lot with very strong directors, Eggers, you know, in this current film being one of them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, that's amazing. I'm looking forward to that one. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, it comes out this Friday, so yeah, you'll definitely be on the lookout Next week, I'll be there at the theater. All right. So, um, on Netflix, you know, I was, um, you know, browsing around those stream <laughs> services at home, and then I came across this uh, mini series, mystery, mystery series called Inventing Anna. I don't know if you have seen, I, I, you said you have heard of it. I have heard of it, but I haven't seen it. It's very similar Man, to... I am so hooked. It's just, it's a brilliant. Um, it's based on true events. Yes. Um, the idea is behind this 20-something years old comes from Germany. <laughs> uh, she's an heiress of a wealthy family in Germany yep. and she comes to New York and meet all the rich of the richest people in New York yep. and she's pretending to be one of them <laughs> and she, you know, it's, I don't want to spoil because I, I have seen, uh, there are no, nine episodes on Netflix, Yes. I have, I have uh, watched six of them and it's just fascinating. And one good thing, do you remember the movie uh, My Girl? Yes. 1991? One, one? One, yes. 1991, yes, 91. All right. So the, the, the girl in that movie, Oh, is she plays the journalist on Inventing Anna. I like her. She was also on Veep on yes. uh, HBO, and she's yeah. very good. She's really good. She's really uh, well cast. So let's catch People the trailer. People in a public picture of me as a criminal. That's not my story. And what? Is your story? I'm a cold. Yes, I'm a cold piece. Anna came to New York. No rich parents. No connections. Sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it. Now we get to the good part. Can I take you out? I'm a servant. What they want if you? Anna is a legend around here. You have to work hard to get what you want. I've always known that. I'm building something. It's a private club. A step beyond the VIP room. It's forty million to finance. We have two banks interested in loaning her the money. And that's a really good jumping off point because my streaming pick this week is very similar to yours. Huh. Uh, my pick is uh, Showtime Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber. And similar to your pick, it also involves someone posing as someone other than what they truly are. It's someone masquerading as something that they're not. And from the title, you can absolutely guess that this is 
a show about Uber, the creation of Uber, the, uh, the twists and turns that it took for Uber to become Uber. And it's also a local story. We're here in San Francisco, so a lot of the series obviously takes place here in the Bay Area, here in the city, in the East Bay, also you know down south a bit on Google and Google's campus. Uh, a lot of a lot of the series is very fast-paced, very uh, very hyper-stylized, and for those who are who would see this as a companion piece to something like The Social Network. Uh, that that is very apt. It's not as good as Social Network, obviously, but it is incredibly poppy and addictive to watch. I started watching one episode and binged the entire series in a day. So I wasn't expecting that, but that's how that's how good and addictively flashy this piece is. And where is it playing? Showtime. So you can see it on, if you have cable, you can see it on Showtime. You can also see it on Showtime's app. But uh, Super Pumped is uh, Showtime's new series. It's. Uh, this season took on Uber. I believe next season will take on the creation of Facebook. So it's from the, uh, the makers of Billions, which is also on Showtime. It's amazing how things are uh, in the Bay Area because you have you know all sort of different types of artists in the Bay. Yes. And one of the most amazing uh, film festivals yeah. uh, is happening right now. We just started last night, opening yeah. night in San Francisco, which is the San Francisco Film Festival. Right, yeah, that started last night, and it runs for about 10 days, I'd say. It starts, uh, starts yesterday, Thursday, but it's going to be in the heart. May 1st? I believe so, yeah, that May sounds 1st. right. Yeah. And once again, if you've been to the San Francisco Film Festival, you know exactly the beautiful programming that you're in for. It's essentially several days of movies from all over the world, artists from all over the world, not just from the Bay Area. But if you haven't been, then please go to their site. Please look at their lineup because they have some amazing picks this year. Yeah. You know, it, they always have amazing picks, but this year in particular, especially after being away for a few years due to COVID, last year was online only, streaming only. Uh, this year they're back full force, full strength, in person, and I'm absolutely looking forward to it. The San Francisco Film Festival brings to the city more than 130 films from 56 countries. For the opening night, the feature film Stay Awake, a powerful movie. It's tough telling that story, but it's also cathartic in a lot of ways. And most importantly, um, it makes me glad that stories like this are being told. So it brings light to the situation. Maybe people can learn about it from a slightly new perspective, you know, that focuses on the caretakers. Loved it, such a personal story, such a small, intimate story um, that we got to create these characters and live in this world. It was um, intimate, intimate and, and special. Chrissy Matz plays a mother of two teenagers. The actress shares the reason she decided to do this movie. Aside from everybody needing to know what's going on with the crisis of opioids and how it is demolishing people's lives and families and relationships, it's, I don't think people understand like the severity of what's going on. And I think, aside from being a journalist, the next best thing about you know sharing what's going on in our world is through TV and film. And we learned so much from that. And so, of course, to work with Jamie and his beautiful writing and, and everything that he experienced, and then of course Finn and Wyatt, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, like I have to do this. And I've always wanted to do an independent film because that's really like the grit. It's really like the love for the passion for the, the project and for filmmaking that, you know, when you have like this big, wild budget, you know, it's kind of cushy. But when you are like pinching pennies to make sure that everything gets on the screen, it's just like, this is what it's all about. Besides being a showcase for movies, San Francisco Film helps filmmakers to bring their stories to the big screen. Um, in, in some ways, it just it feels almost familial. I mean, it's it's been an organization that's really been there the entire time, um, and so it, it 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 just feels in a really nice way coming full circle. Um, I've been here, you know, twice for other SF Film events, having to do is stay awake and to be able to come now and show it as a North American premiere is really uh, special. Uh, last question for you, which is a video that has gone viral. <laughs> yes, yes. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. You know, guys, I don't want to say it was my idea, 
but I've been to many, many, many weddings. And if you don't wobble, you ain't having a good time. And I was like, guys, can we please wobble? Like somebody wanted to do the electric side and the cha-cha side. I was like, can we please wobble? So we had to do it during Kate's second wedding to fill up, spoiler alert, if you're not caught up, sorry. Um, but it was so fun. And I wasn't supposed to be dancing in that dress. I'm really sorry, Marcia and Hala. Um, seriously, we're not going to tell. It's 45 pounds of a dress, and I was not supposed to move without somebody else picking up the train. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm picking it up, and we're going to wobble. So it was a great time. Thank you for asking about it. Shaking the city like quake, yeah. The haters blow in the face like John Doe, cause I'm breaking the cake, so let's bake, yeah. I'm taking the game, the game's mine. Yeah, I witness the change, it's my time. Yeah, I'm new to the game. Um, moving on. Yes. What is your pick for Blu-ray Blu -ray or DVD? Yeah, for, so for today's show, I'm going in a very uh, different direction for our Blu-ray and DVD pick. Uh, Jackass Forever, which was just released on physical media this past week. Uh, again, if you've seen the Jackass series, you know exactly what you're getting into. It's a bunch of guys hitting each other, causing as much bodily damage as they can for laughs. Uh, those who are not into that kind of thing, you this is more of the same, so you will absolutely not want to see this one. But if you are into it, like I am, and I laugh at silly things like the Jackass series, this is right up your alley. Uh, and speaking of Netflix, just a few days ago, Netflix has announced that Jackass 4.5 will debut on Netflix on May 20th. So oh. if you like the Jackass series, if you like Jackass Forever, 4.5 is coming. So that, again, more the same, but to someone like me who loves the series, that, that's probably a good thing. Do they have, on when they release new Blu-rays or DVDs, you know, about the movie that was released years ago, yeah. do they bring new scenes sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. it depends on what the title is. It depends on the restoration process and the special features in the package. Uh, lately, you know, those kinds of things have become, have sadly become a thing of the past where special editions of movies are not as common as they were in the heyday of DVDs, for example. Uh, now, Blu-ray copies, 4K copies, you're lucky if you get a couple of extra scenes or even a trailer, mm -hmm. but, you know, when you have a movie come out with a really deluxe edition, that's what I love. You know, it's the whole point of collecting physical media, not just beautiful visuals and great sound, but also, you know, the care that it takes to put a package like that together. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I love when there's those extra scenes. Absolutely. Me yeah, too. Yeah. 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 So we're going to start something new today yeah. on, you know, I'm going to get, give you my picks of the month. So in this case, we're talking about May, which to me, it's one of the most amazing months of the year for movies, Absolutely. for new releases. It's the start of the summer movie season. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Downton Abbey, and I watch all the seasons probably three, four times, oh, wow. the movies a couple of times too, okay. the movie. Now yeah. there's the new second movie, which is Downton Abbey, A New Era. Uh, which he, uh, hit theaters on May 20th. Yes. So fans of uh, uh, of, uh, of the Downton Abbey, um, the wait is almost over. So <laughs> you can catch it this coming month. Yeah, especially for fans of the series. Oh yeah, like. yeah, yeah. And another movie um, I thought was like you know I have to add it to my um, my pick of the month is Top Gun Mavericks. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, I was watching the trailer, people are kind of seeing some scenes right now. I thought, wow, wow, this is fantastic. It definitely feels like Top Gun updated for, you know, 2022. Even though this movie was finished before our COVID lockdown, it's finally coming out. So I'm curious to see if anything has changed in the interim, but I get the feeling the film was locked then and it's pretty much locked now. So we're just finally getting around to seeing it. It's, it's probably like the last big blockbuster pre-COVID that was just delayed. Another pick of the month is Doctor Strange yeah. and the Multiverse of... Uh, Madness. Madness, thank you so much. Yeah. Which hit theaters on May 6th. So that's another Marvel movie which I'm gonna go because I like him. Um, I like the movie too. Yeah, I don't know, right. I'll be there. Hey, yeah. I like the first Doctor Strange and I'm gonna see the first one or revisit it right before I see the second one. In a That's few a weeks. good point. Yeah, I'm very excited for it. You know, again, physical media, I have the first one, so it would be a waste to just own it and not revisit it right before I jump yeah. into the new one. 
Um, and what are your picks of the month? Yeah, you know, Doctor Strange is obviously going to kick off the summer movie season, but uh, my picks are, are a little different. So my first one is Men on May 20th, and it's from director Ar Alex Garland, who did uh, Ex Machina and Annihilation. Uh, not much is known about Men, but it's supposed to be a very hyper-stylized uh, horror thriller with Jesse Buckley, who was just nominated for an Oscar for The Lost Daughter. So with that, uh, that combo sounds amazing to me. I like his stuff. I like her. So I think May 20th, I will definitely be checking out Men. Uh, my second pick is Bob's Burgers the movie, or the Bob's Burgers movie. I've heard it said both ways. <laughs> And that's May 27th. Uh, that is obviously a spin-off of the popular Bob's Burgers TV show. So if you are a fan of the show, this movie's right up your alley. If you're not, consider giving a couple of, uh, giving a shot to some of the episodes on Hulu of Bob's Burgers. It's, it's very witty animation, and I think, you know, testing the waters that way will definitely let you know if you're going to be in for the movie or not. Hmm. So uh, I have a question. We need to go. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot again. <laughs> Do, um, the new movie with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Have you seen it? Oh, you mean the, the unbearable weight of massive yes. talent? Absolutely. It's a mouthful of a title, but it's also a really fun movie. Is uh, it based on Nicolas Cage? It's a, you know, career? it's a take on Nicolas Cage, yeah. the legend, you know, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, and it's essentially, uh, you know, what happened, what would happen if Nicolas Cage were down and out and needed, you know, a lifeline. In this case, a million dollar offer from a wealthy playboy. Wow. Well, so this movie wasn't part of our topics for the show, but he knows everything about movies. I just no. need to ask him. No, that's fine. It's a good yeah. movie. And just as a, as a quick aside, you know, I reviewed The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent out of South by Southwest last month. So if you want a quick rundown, Uh, of my review, please go to the movie lens. It's right there in the best of South by Southwest. Or you can find me on Twitter at Big Dumb Mail. And you can find me on Instagram at G Martins TV. And we are on, on Twitter as News Up Now. News Up Now, I'm sorry. Well, I guess that's it. Yeah, another episode Time of the flies so fast. Absolutely. Right here. I But, love you know, it. Yeah. Hey, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for, you know, listening to our picks. Hopefully you'll join us for episode three. But I'm having a great time so far. Me too. Me All too. Right. Well, keep bringing the movies. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's keep this going for episode exactly. three. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching us. I'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Great. Absolutely. See you then.